Whenever we do a car or a controlled articular rotation of any joint that we're practicing with, there's two principles that we need to carry suit with as we are doing the movement. One is maintaining a stable base. I like to use the 20% stable base as our metric and to keep in our head as we're doing so. So act as if your feet are a base of a tree and you're maintaining a strong stable base with about 20%. 100% would be clenching down, trying to be as stable as possible. 20% is just keeping that feet in the ground, stable as you can for about 20% of the way. Second principle is whenever we're moving the joint in space, we want to act as if we're moving through 30% denser than air. So for the shoulder example, if I had negative density in the air, I would just whip around, whip around. 30% density is just a little bit thicker than air where it feels like I'm going against a little bit of resistance. So let's keep these two principles in mind and apply it to any joint as we move through. Okay, here we will be discussing the scapular thoracic joint. The shoulder is consistent of two different joints, the glenohumeral joint and the scapular thoracic joint. So this one, the arm bone won't particularly move, but instead we'll be moving our scapula on our rib cage. Okay, so two things that we want to premise with this is one, making sure that we have that 20% stable base. And secondly, we want to make sure that we're not moving at any other joints. Typically, we see people bring their arm forward or they'll lean forward or lean back while they do so. We want to stay away from doing that. Our arm should always stay parallel with our body and we never want to see any motion going anywhere with the arm, only the scapula on the rib cage. Okay, so we'll have Blake demo. Blake, why don't you step this way? Right arm only, it's adjacent to our side, and we're going to start with elevation as much as we can. And then we're going to protrude our shoulder forward. And holding that protrusion forward, now we're going to depress going downwards. Holding that downwards force, now we're going to retract going backwards. Holding that retraction, now we're going to go all the way up into elevation. Holding the elevation, we're going to go back into protrusion. Holding the protrusion, let's go down into depression. Once we get all the way down as much as we can, we're going to retract with depression. And now we're going to elevate with retraction. Keep that retraction. Let's go back down into depression. Hold the depression. Go into protraction. Protract and elevate. Elevate and retract. And relax. So notice we're almost making a square with the joint. We go in all four ranges of motion with depression and elevation.